فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد we are in the explanation of the book uh, منهج الحق written by uh, الشيخ العلامة عبد الرحمن ابن ناصر السعدي and we said this book it deals with uh, it's a manzuma it's lines of poetry that deal with العقيدة and الأخلاق it deals with um, creedal matters and also etiquette and manners in our last lesson we stopped at the 12th line and inshallah ta'ala we're going to be al kareem carry on from there some هو الحي والقيوم ذو الجود والغنى وكل صفات الحمد لله تسند احاط بكل الخلق علما وقدره وبرا واحسانا فاياه نعبد He is al hay ever living and al qayyum sustainer of all infinitely generous free of all needs and all praiseworthy traits are ascribed to him he encompasses all creation by his knowledge and power and kindness and favor thus he is the only one we worship so the author rahimahullah he says huwa al hayyu wal qayyum the word al hayyu it means the one who has complete life alladhi lahu al hayatu al kamila allah has complete life and what that means is that lam tusbaq adam there was never a time he wasn't alive. وَلَا يَلْحَقُهَا فَنَا And there is never going to come a time when he's not alive. So that's why it's complete. Also, he's living وَلَا يَعْتَرِيهَا نَقْصٌ Never deficiency does it come to it. So as a human being, he's living even that though we didn't have it before. Of course, we're not going to be having it forever. But whilst we also have it, sometimes deficiency occurs to it. Allah doesn't have it. It's at, it's at its complete form. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what it means, al-hayyu. The second one is al-qayyumu. And al-qayyumu means al-qa'imu bi nafsi, the one who stands for his own affairs. He doesn't really need anyone to help him. Al-muqimu li khalqihi, also he stands for the affairs of his creation. So this also entails the word qayyum, it entails and it means. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't need anyone. And that he also has complete ability. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these two names, Al-Hay and Al-Qayyum, they have both come in the Quran in many places. From the surahs that have, sorry, from the verses that have mentioned these two characteristics is the greatest ayah in the Quran, Ayatul Kursi. And these two names is said as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentions in his kitab Zadul Mi'ad fi Hadi Khayr al-Ibad that um, these two names all of the names of Allah come back to it these two names Al-Hay and Al-Qayyum go back all the names go back to these two names because Allah's name characteristics are of two types Sifat which are Dhatiyah and Sifat which are Fi'liyah Sifat Dhatiya we mentioned on many different occasions. Sifat Dhatiya are characteristics that are not connected to Allah's will. Meaning Allah wa ta'ala is never detached from these characteristics. He's always of these characteristics. And that is Al-Hay. Because every other characteristics that Allah has, for example, knowledge, for example, seeing, all of those can't happen if Allah is not alive. So that's why it goes back to that characteristics. It goes back to characteristics of al-hay. And sifat, the second type is sifat, which are sifat 
fi'liya, characteristics that are connected to Allah's will. In other words, Allah does it when he wishes and he leaves off it when he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it goes back to the characteristics al-qayyum. Because every characteristic Allah does, he's doing, he's doing it because he has complete what? Ability. And he also is rich from his creation. He doesn't need them. He's of no need of them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Ibn al-Qayyim says, فَإِنَّ صِفَةَ الْحَيَاةِ مُتَضَمِّنَةٌ لِجَمِيعِ الصِّفَاتِ الْكَمَالِ مُسْتَلْزِمَةٌ لَهَا وَصِفَةُ الْقَيُّومِيَّةِ مُتَضَمِّنَةٌ لِجَمِيعِ الصِّفَاتِ الْأَفْعَالِ وَلِهَذَا كَانَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ الْأَعْظَمِ الَّذِي إِذَا دُعِيَ بِهِ أَجَابُ وَإِذَا سُئِلَ بِهِ أَعْطَى هُوَ اسْمُ الْحَيُّ الْقَيُّومِ لذلك Ibn al-Qayyim says that it is the two names that, that if a slave asks Allah and begs Allah on these two characteristics, Allah will give that slave what he asks for. It's what's known as Ismullah al-A'zam. Ismullah al-A'zam is what? Al-Hayyu al-Qayyum. So if a person uses these two names, then and he asks Allah, he will get what he asks for. Then the author said after that, Dhu al-Judi, Dhu al-Judi. Dhu of course means sahib. The possessor, the one who possesses al-Jud. And Jude means Al-In'am Wal-Ikram Wal-Tafadul Wal-Ihsan It is the one who bestows generosity He bestows virtue Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala And Allah as we know He's Ajwadul Ajwadin He's the most generous one And Akramul Akrameen Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Allah's generosity and his kindness towards his creation is something that the slaves can never be able to put a figure to it. That's why Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you sit down and you try to put a figure to the blessings of Allah upon you, you will never be able to. It's too much and it's too large in amount. <clears throat> in another ayah, Allah says, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ That there is no blessing which you have. Except it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person has to realize that everything he has is from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's this brothers and sisters that when a person comes to understand this and he comes to realize this, he will stop complaining. Because some of the salaf, they would lose loved ones and they would lose somebody in which they admired but guess what they would respond by saying they would say oh Allah you gave it to me in the first place and you took what was yours you gave me you have given me this in the first place and you took what was yours that's how they saw it but what we see it as is this is ours it was ours and it was taken from us this is why we're, we're regretting a lot this is why we're complaining and we're wailing ولذلك عروة بن الزبير عروة بن الزبير when he lost his child after he went to Sham and he was he lost his because cancer happened to him so they amputated his leg and when he finished the prayer they told him that his son they told him that he lost one of his children what did he say and what did he say to Allah تبارك وتعالى he said to Allah oh Allah you gave me four limbs and you took one Oh Allah, you gave me four children and you took one. From you it came and to you it returned back. So that's why Ishar feeling this concept which is that Allah wa ta'ala is the one who gave you everything. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ That every blessing that you have, everything that you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the sad thing because a lot of the times when blessings are spoke about, spoken about a lot of the time people actually assume and they think to themselves it's only worldly related matters. And that isn't the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings are, there are bigger blessings that he has given you. And that is Islam. That is the greatest blessing a person could be given. And that is why Allah referred to it as a blessing. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا اليوم today, I have completed your religion for you. 
اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي and I have what completed my blessings unto you as well ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا and I have become pleased for Islam to be your religion so what this shows us is that Islam is what Islam is a blessing from who from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's from the greatest blessing that we have what we see is that what we see is that Abu Talib who is the Prophet sallallahu uncle who helped the Prophet who supported the Prophet he didn't have the blessing that Allah has given you look what he said in his lines of poetry he says وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُ بِأَنَّ دِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ خَيْرِ الْبَرِيَّةِ دِينَ لَوْلَا الْمَلَامَةُ أَوْ حِدَارَ مُسَبَّتٍ لَوَجَدْتَنِي بِذَاكَ سَمْحَ مُبِينَ something like that he said he said that I have realized and I have come to the understanding that Muhammad's religion is the best of all religions. And he said, if it wasn't for the blame of my tribe and also me having to say something about my forefathers, you would have all found me I would have taken what Muhammad has come with. And I would have accepted it. Also look at Abu... Uh, so you can see the fact that Abu Talib wasn't blessed enough to be given al Islam. The same is with who... The same is applies with um, Nabiullah Ibrahim's father. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ آزَرَ أَتَتَّخِذُ أَسْنَامًا آلِهَا إِنِّي أَرَاكَ وَقَوْمَكَ فِي الضَّلَالِ الْمُبِينَ Nabiullah Ibrahim said to his father, Azar, أَتَتَّخِذُ أَسْنَامًا آلِهَا Are you going to take idols as your Lord? إِنِّي أَرَاكَ I see you. I see you and your people all upon clear cut misguidance. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, he take, took time out to guide his father, to, to tell him what his father is upon is wrong. But ma'adalika, did he take it? What we were told in the authentic narrations is that the day of judgment Abu Ta- uh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim's father, Azar, is going to come and he's going to look like a a wild dog. He's going to come in the form of a wild dog. First he comes to him and he says to his son Ibrahim, Father, Azara says to Ibrahim, the day of judgment, command me today. Tell me today what, what is right from what's wrong. And I promise to submit. I promise to surrender. I promise to take it. So Ibrahim turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says to Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, my Lord, innaka wa'atani, you made a promise for me. The promise that you made for me was what? Allah said in the Quran, Ibrahim said, Rabbi la, 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 Rabbi la, uh, Oh Allah, la tukhzini yawma yub'atun. Oh Allah, don't humiliate me the day of resurrection. So Ibrahim asked Allah, Ya Rabbi, you promised me that you're not going to humiliate me. Allah then says to Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, this is a creed. This is something Allah has destined that a disbeliever will not enter Jannah. And so as he's talking, his father turns into a wolf, a, a, a wild dog. Yeah? A chakw, naam. And he becomes, and, he's, and he barks in front of his father. Now this is what, this is something that we need to realize. It's a blessing from Allah to have Islam. Everything else, if you lose it, it's replaceable. But if you lose Islam, there's nothing you can replace it with. Then the author goes on to say, Wal ghina. Ghina here means Allah wa Ta'ala is rich. Ghina meaning he's rich, he doesn't need anyone. Allah is, is no in need of any of his creation, but they are in need of him. As Allah says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ Oh people, you are in need. You are poor. You are in need. To who? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ And Allah is rich. He's rich from his slaves. Allah does not need your obedience. He doesn't need it. And your... Your ma'asiyah, your sinning and going against Allah's command doesn't also harm him. That's why in the hadith al-Qudsi in Sahih Muslim, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ibadi my slaves, innakum lan tablughu dharri fatadurruni, wa lan tablughu naf'i fatanfa'uni. My slaves, you cannot reach a point where you can harm me by sinning and going against my command. And you also can't, you can't obey Allah so much that you're benefiting him, that he gets benefits from it. In, in essence and in truth, the one you're doing a favor for by praying and fasting and going hajj and following his command, Allah ta'ala, the person you're doing a favor for is yourself, no one else. You're really saving your flesh, your bones from the hellfire. So keep that in mind. Allah does not need you in any way, form or shape. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the author said after that, وَكُلُّ الصِّفَاتِ الْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ تُسْنَدُوا وَكُلُّ الصِّفَاتِ Every characteristics of praise. لِلَّهِ تُسْنَدُوا It is attributed back to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word تُسْنَدُوا means a tudafu ilayhi. It's attributed to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every characteristics that shows praise is brought back to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we say praises to him subhanahu wa ta'ala ala ni'amihi wa, man, wa minanihi. Praises to Allah wa ta'ala for his blessings and his virtues wa afdali wa atayah and that which he has given us. فَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ كُلُّهُ All of praises for him. رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The Lord of the universe. Then the author said after that أَحَاطَ بِكُلِّ الْخَلْقِ عِلْمًا وَقُدْرَةً the whole of the creation, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is encompassed it with knowledge. That's why Allah said in the Quran, La Ya'zubu Anhu Mithkala Dharratin fi Samawati wala fin Arab. A mustard seed of something cannot be hidden from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guess what? Allah can see and Allah knows and is aware of the footprints of an ant in a pitch black dark night under a rock. He can see that and he knows it. Nothing is hidden from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we always say, Allah knows what was. سَيَكُونُ And that which is going to be. وَمَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَوْ كَانَ كَيْفَ يَكُونُ And he also knows that which hasn't happened, if it was to happen, how it would have happened. It hasn't happened. But if it was to happen, he knows how it would have happened. As Allah said in the Quran, بَلْ بَدَى لَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُخْفُونَ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُوا عَنْهُ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ Allah says the day of judgment, it becomes clear to them. Clear to who? It becomes clear to the disbelievers, the sins and the crimes that they have come with. Allah then says, because they start crying, Ya Rabbi, oh our Lord, the disbelievers and the criminals, they say, oh Allah, take us back to the world. And what are you going to do? We're going to become righteous. We're going to follow your command. We're going to do as you tell us. That's what they say, right? And then Allah says, look, if they were to be taken back to the universe, if they were to be taken back to the world, they would have done what? They would have gone exactly to that which they were stopped from. They would do exactly where they left off from. Sah? Have you guys not seen these criminals? Or this? There's a YouTube program. Some youngsters and youths. They're taken out of prison. They're given a second chance. They're told, go outside, fix yourself up, do your thing. You see? Make sure you don't fall. And they fall exactly. They go to the same crowd. They go exactly to where they left off from. And then they end up coming to prison again. And subhanAllah, one of the, um, the police guards in the, in, the, in the prison says, yeah, looking at him, he won't last outside for two, two weeks. Two, three weeks he won't last. And so he end up he ends up coming to her. He ends up coming. Are you with me? Allah knows which of those is going to take a lesson. Which of those is going to come back? Which of those? Are you with me? So Allah's knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a knowledge that is beyond our comprehension. Al Imam Dhahabi said something powerful. He said in Isir Allah min Nubala. Now I think it was in Sir. That he said, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, a hadith in which he does not know is a hadith which is weak. The chances of it being a hadith, ibn Taymiyyah doesn't know, he said. 
his, his ittila and his reading and his knowledge was just so vast. But then after he said something powerful, he said, Illa anna al lillah. Except to be able to encompass everything and have knowledge of everything, had lillah. He, he held himself back. Because there's no one who can really say what? I have encompassed something in knowledge. Allah says in the Quran, Allah الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما. Allah is the one who encompassed knowledge in everything. Subhanahu wa taala knows everything. And our knowledge is very limited, very very limited. As Allah also said in another ayah, Subhanahu wa taala, وفوق كل ذي علم عليم. Everyone who has knowledge. The most knowledgeable one is above them. There's still, there's still more to learn. There's still more to learn. Then the author said after that, wa qudratan. Qudratan here means what? Allah also encompassed ev- ability. That's for him. He's able to do everything. Subhanahu wa taala. Are you there? Now, some atheists and agnostics or whatever. Their argument always is: Can God create a rock which he can't lift, or can God create another garden? Sah. We as Muslims always need to remember this concept, which is that Allah's actions, Allah's ability is always, is always accompanied. Allah's ability is always accompanied with wisdom. Allah doesn't just do something because He's able to. Rather, that's a deficiency for the Creator. Are you there? Are you with me, brothers? If somebody comes up to you and says to you, Akhi, head back the wall. And you know somehow you can't head that and you can you can you could do something to the wall and you do do it. Are people gonna laugh at you? Are you there, brothers? People are gonna laugh at you and say, look, you've just thought of the side of your what? The ability. Are you there? You've only looked at what? Ability. That's why Allah's actions are not stripped from wisdom. So he does things with, with, with wisdom. So when they ask you this question, are you with me? When they ask you this question, can God make a rock that he can't lift or can God create another God? And etc. You'll say to them, we don't believe Allah's ability is all that he does things with. We believe everything he does, he does it with what? He does it with knowledge and wisdom. So what wisdom lies in him having to create a rock which he can't lift? You tell me the wisdom and then we'll say that he can or that we then we'll, we'll progress in our discussion. Does that make sense, brothers? That's why it is important. So Allah Taala says in the same ayah that we read before in Surah At-Talaq, Allah الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلموا أن الله that Allah Taala على على كل شيء قدير. Allah has the ability of everything. Is that it? وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما. So look at what is being said here. Ability is being used, and also what's being used knowledge. So it's those two together. It is ability and knowledge he does things with. Are you there? We might do something because we're able to. But remember, that could be that same thing that we've done could be the, our destruction. Because we don't really know the, the, the outcome of this action that we're going to do. We don't have that knowledge. Our, our, our knowledge is limited. Are you with me, brothers? Now, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, brought a very powerful point, which is, and this is the exact problem that we have with atheists and, 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 and a lot of people who are, a lot of people who are Muslims, Ba'dalika, they, they've, they've indulged too much into this uh, philosophical arguments. And they've also indulged too much into rationa- rationality and whatnot. Forgetting that they should go back to the sources, the kitab and the sunnah. It, it is that they still haven't understood that their knowledge is limited. Are you with me? That their knowledge is what? Limited. That their brain is limited in what it can see and what it knows. Just like Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the eyesight of the person, it's limited how far you can see. You can't really see beyond a uh, limit. It just, you can't see. Somebody asks you to tell me somebody who's at Twickenham Station right now, you would say, I don't know. Because your seeing is limited. That's the same way when it comes to your aql, your brain. Are you with me? But the poet said that one day 
the aql and knowledge came, they met each other <coughs> aql and knowledge came and they met each other they had a conversation aql said to knowledge i'm better than you it's through me you recognize allah then aql aql said that through me you recognize who allah is knowledge went it put his head down and he lifted his head up and he said to knowledge i'm the one who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascribe to himself you know allah never calls himself aqil he always calls himself alim knowledge knowledgeable one when knowledge had said that he realized what aql when he, knowledge said that what did he realize that knowledge is more stronger than him and that the truth of the matter is knowledge so what did aql do he he kissed the head of knowledge and they both went together they, they left the argument aside the point is that it is knowledge brothers not just aql mujarradan it's not aql mujarradan ولذلك ابن تيمي when he refuted Fakhruddin al-Razi Fakhruddin ar Fakhruddin al-Razi Sheikh al-Islam Taymi are you there? Fakhruddin al-Razi's argument was that when the Quran and logic they both oppose one another after he, he, done more, he went through levels the final one is that he said that the aql should be taken the aql should be given president is because through the aql you actually knew the Quran you knew to came you came to it if you strip the aql then you're standing only with Quran which how did you come to this in the first place are you there yeah so he goes if they con if they contradict or if they oppose one another the aql should be given precedence over the nakal the text Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah refuted him in a very rational manner he said if two people so if a person wanted to go to a doctor so a person was ill had an eye problem or something and he said to the doctor so he said to the uh, person do you know anyone who's who can cure me from this problem or do you know a specialist in this field so the person says to him yeah i do i know somebody let me take you to him so a person grabs you by the hand and he takes you to the doctor now you're in front of the doctor and also in front of the the one who brought you the doctor then tells you okay he scans you looks at your eye sees what the problem is and then he prescribes medication for you. The one who brought you says, listen, don't listen to the doctor, listen to me. I'm the one who brought you here. I'm the one who brought you here. Listen to me, I'll tell you what's right. Don't listen to the doctor, he's wrong. Would you do that? Are you with me? No, you wouldn't. You've done your part, that's what you knew. This guy probably doesn't know the difference between the eye and the nose. But you know where the doctor was? Are you with me, brothers? So... Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah responds like that. So the point is, brothers, Allah's actions are not just ability alone. It's based on wisdom. Allah does things with hikam, wisdom. Sometimes those hikam are apparent to us and we recognize them and we know them. And sometimes we don't know them. But because we don't know them, it doesn't mean he did it without with no wisdom. Are you with me, brothers? So when you respond to that question, make sure that that's the answer that you, you respond with. Also Allah Taala He says وَبِرًّا وَإِحْسَانًا Allah Taala The word birran and ihsan means virtue and, and out of good uh, generosity and kindness of Him Subhanahu Wa Taala is the one who is bestowed His blessings and His virtue upon His slaves فَإِيَّاهُ نَعْبُدُ Only Him we worship Allah has encompassed knowledge of his creation and ability over them and he also subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has virtue and generosity and kindness over his creation because of that فَإِيَّهُ نَعْبُدُ we worship him alone وَلِذَلِكَ Allah says in the Quran وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَفَعُهُمْ Allah says they worship besides Allah that which can't harm them and that which can't benefit them are you with me? The truth of the matter is, is that Allah can harm you and He can benefit you. This is the things. Are you with me? Allah can harm you and He can benefit you. How can He harm you? By destroying you. By withholding the blessings that He gave you. If only Allah forsakes you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, a split second, your whole life is going to get messed up. You really are under His control. 
your whole body, the way it functions, it's under his control. It's going according to how he wants it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The minute Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, he dismisses you, Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, forsakes you, you are truly in a state of destruction. You're in a state of what? Destruction. So because Allah is that, because Allah controls our affairs, is because Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, encompasses knowledge of everything. Because he has ability over everything. We what? We worship him alone. Does he not have the right to be worshipped alone then? Are you with me, brothers? He does. He does deserve it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it doesn't ever make sense. For the one who does all of that for you. Like Allah ta'ala says to the Quraysh in many different places in the Quran. Are you with me? That you guys are worshipping besides Allah. And Allah then gives them a parable, example. He said, what about a abd, mamluk, a slave which is owned by a master? This master who owns this slave, this slave doesn't serve his master. He serves another master. How would you feel? Would you allow your, your slave? No, you wouldn't. A wife today would not allow her to share her husband. She wouldn't like shirk in her husband. You see... But you would allow shirk in Allah. The benefit that you have from your husband is nafr which is qasir, very short. When I say qasir here, I don't mean it's only to him alone, but I mean qasir is deficient. It's not complete. The days he makes you happy and the days he makes you upset. But you don't want to share him. Even at that moment you're doing shirk, he's still controlling your affairs. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, فَإِيَّاهُ نَعْبُدُهُ He alone we should worship. And we should not associate him with partners. We should, by default, humiliate ourselves for him. Humble ourselves for him. Show him complete love. Show us, show him what? Complete love. He knows everything about us. He knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has ability over us. Ability in what? To destroy us or to bring us benefit. So, we should, we should worship him alone. That's why the author says, And of course, he got it from the ayah which is, What does it mean? We worship you, Allah. And we don't worship anybody other than you. That's what it means. And we seek help from you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and support. And we don't seek help from anyone other than you. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions ibadah and isti'ana is because they are the two greatest sins that were worshipped that were that, that, that were done. The opposite to ibadah is what? Kibr. And that's what Iblis came with. And the opposite to isti'ana is what? The opposite to isti'ana is sorry, the opposite to ibadah, he says, Ibn al Qayyim says this. Is um, uh, I mean, full shirk, but he means the opposite to ibadah. He says is that it is the kibir, naam. and the opposite to isti'ana is hasad, I think. Hasad, which is that which the children of of Nabiullah Adam came with, Ibn Adam, which is the first sin that the creation, the children of Adam came with. Something like that Ibn al-Qayyim mentions. Naam.